Okay, by now you've seen these envelopes. They've been ubiquitous both on the web and in your mailbox. They're the little red envelopes from Netflix. But now we have something new. Well, not new. It's streaming. This is the future of Netflix, and they're doing a great job in it. The next country they're going to go to is going to be the Netherlands. They're already in Canada. They're already profitable in Canada, so they're doing a great job. So we're going to be looking at the stock today and seeing if there's anything we can glean from the price action where we can make some money. We'll also be looking at the results of Netflix using our trade trial technology. So let's get started right away. Okay, so let's get started with my home page. You can see, welcome Adam Hewison. I'm going to go right to my portfolio, which is here, and click once, and it'll take you right to your portfolio page. Now, you can set several portfolios up, many, quite a few, you can see right here, but I've set one up a special report on Netflix. And as you can see, Netflix has two green trade triangles, which is a good sign. That means the intermediate and the longer term trend positive on Netflix. So going to a chart, we simply click on the little icon here, and it brings us to a chart. Now the chart we're looking at now is a f chart from 2005, and as you can see, Netflix went for many, many years, actually a period of about four years or so, nowhere, just sort of sideways, no big movement. All of a sudden it caught fire, took off all the way up to $700, then it had an incredible drop, and that was because of the introduction of streaming and two price tiering. It was a big mistake, and I think Reed Hastings would be the first to admit it was a mistake. And then we sort of bottomed out a little bit, and then we started back up. Now, to me, Netflix, and I've said this from the beginning, is a leader in the field, and it's really got a brand name. They're using an Amazon-type approach where they're sacrificing short-term profits for bigger-term gains in the future. They're building, continuing to build up their base, which I think is now huge in terms of subscribers. I mean, they've got a lot of people subscribing to the service every single month. So let's take a look at the stock closer up and see what we can glean from this information. We'll go to the last two years, and you can see the big bottoming out action right here. This is a daily chart, by the way. And you can see the move out of that. Now, the key thing to remember here is this level right here. This is where the market, about the 130 level, broke to the upside. Now, if I put on monthly trade triangles, and you'll see something pretty interesting. Here's the monthly trade triangle. It kicked in at 84.95, telling that the trend had turned to the upside, and it's likely to continue. So we got originally very bullish on December 4th of 2012, and you can see it's been a nice ride up. We'll be looking at those results a little later on. Let's get closer in and we'll take a look at some of the trades that we made using our trade triangle technology. So let's do that right now. Now I've shortened this up. We're only looking at three months now, going back to about the end of April. And you can see this sort of little bit of a top here at 270 and the price has turned down. Now this is after the announcement that came. The disappoint. I thought the announcement was fine. I thought the earnings were good but it disappointed the market. That's the most important thing. So two elements to look at, in my opinion, here. And that is this high here, this high period, back on the 16th of May, and also these highs right here that occurred right around the same time. So I would take our tool like our trend line and just draw a trend line from here through to here. And that's pretty straight, I think. Yep. So old resistance, which this was, now becomes support. And I think we'll see that support hold. Now, if it doesn't hold, this is what else we can do. We can use our Fibonacci tool, which is right here. And you see this has changed to Fibonacci. I clicked on it once. And all I'm going to do is drag from the high of 270 all the way down to these recent lows. I'm going to call it right there. That's about average. And you can look at the 246 area as an area that it could come back to. It's a 38.2% Fibonacci retracement. The 50% retracement is 239, and the 61.8% is 231. Now, could it come back all the way here? Yes, of course it could. But the reality is, it is in a stronger, longer-term fundamental uptrend, and you can see that from 
or buy the 8495. Now that's going to continue unless we were to take out the lows here, let's say at 200. And I think I think that's an unlikely scenario. So let's take a look at how far it can come back and what the strategies are you should use. So let's at this point in time, let's put in our trade triangles. But before we do that, let's take a look at the MACD, which is just beginning to lose a bit of momentum. You can see this the last several days is losing momentum. So we may have some more of a correction. I would not be surprised to see that. So putting in our weekly trade triangles, which is our timing, you can see our last signal came in here at 235.88. And there's the price right there. So even though the markets come back down, we still are in a profitable position and we want to hold this position until we're showing other trends that would cause us to get out of this position. So let's take a look at the numbers of Netflix and how they work out for you for the year using our trade trial. So far, trading Netflix, symbol NFLX, we have completed two trades. The first one was $83.80 profit. The second one was $18.41. And we have an open trade profit of $15.52 for a total of $117.73. Now let's go to the chart and look to see where the signals actually came in. Okay, we're looking at the chart from the beginning of the year for Netflix, but our signal actually occurred in December, first signal, in December of 2012. So let's just go back a little bit and let's just put our weekly and monthly in. So there's the monthly, there's the kick in on the monthly on December 4th, 8495. You can see the same price here to confirm it. Trend is up. You only want to trade with the monthlies for the trend direction. Now, timing wise, you would originally put a position on here, but if you got out, you'd re-enter that position on the 12th of December, right here, 89.78, and that stayed in effect. But because we had taken the results from the beginning of the year, we're choosing to use the opening on the 2nd of January at 95.21 as the entry point. And they're the results we're showing you. So we get in here, first, let's go to the first of the year, year to date, boom, we're in right here at, there it is, 95.81. We're out at this level here, 179.01, and we're back in 191, so forth and so on. So that's how you trade. Just follow the triangles and you'll do well. But let's take a look at the rules. So as promised, here are the rules for the trade triangles when you trade stocks. First of all, the most important rules are the monthly trade triangles. They determine the major trend, whether it's up, that would be a green triangle, or whether it's down, that would be a red triangle. We couple that with the weekly trade triangles. So we use the monthly trade triangles to determine trend. Then we use the weekly trade triangles for entry and exit signals. And how that works, if the trend is down, then we only use a green weekly trade triangle to get out of a position. Conversely, if the trend is up, we'd only use a red weekly trade triangle to exit that position. All new positions are put on when the colors combine in the two trade triangles. That's it. Pretty easy, huh? You can find Adam Hewison as a regular contributor on Bloomberg, Business News Network, CNBC, and Fox Business News.